Hope you all are doing great. It's a beautiful morning here, and we're excited to start this webinar. Thank you all for joining us. It looks like we have a full house today. Welcome to the Zindrello webinar on the importance of personalization in a loyalty program. My name is Tuti, and I will be your moderator for this webinar. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat bar and our expert will take them up during or at the end of the session. Watch out for the polls that may come up during the webinar. Towards the end of the session, we have something exclusive for you, so stay tuned. I'll now hand it over to Dibo, Director of Sales at Zindrello, to take it from here. Over to you, Dibo. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Stati. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in from, I've been told, different parts of the world. Uh, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, even to everyone who've taken their time to be a part of this webinar. As you know, Stati mentioned, I'm Dibbo. I manage the sales function for the company and uh, very excited to be doing this. Okay. Um, as, as you know, Stuti mentioned, we are going to be talking about the importance of personalization in this day and age. Uh, we are going to talk about why this is important, how this can be bettered, and how a loyalty program can really sort of help you double down on your personalization efforts. Towards the end of this webinar, we are going to also talk about some case studies, you know, success stories, and then finally end with something pretty exciting, okay? So let's get started. And if you have any questions at any point in time, just please feel free to uh, send it across in the chat box, okay? We're gonna start with some uh, food for thought, right? Mm. In this day and age, are brands and companies really looking to engage with their customers on a transactional level or are they looking to go beyond the transactional and really engage with their customers and other stakeholders at an emotional level right what is going to yield more results oftentimes there are a lot of companies that sort of shy away or balk at the concept of their customers redeeming loyalty points, right? So they talk about uh, it leading to a decrease in revenue and more costs and so on. We uh, sort of respectfully disagree, right? In our opinion, and of course we have data to prove this, redemption is good. The more your customers are redeeming points with you, it just means that they are engaging more with your brand, they are buying more from you, and at the end of it all, it will lead to more revenue and LTV. Okay. Loyalty and engagement has to be a two-way street, right? Uh, yes, I, as a you know, customer, want to be loyal to the brand, but what, I'm, but what I'm also looking to see is if the brand, I mean, is the brand reciprocating that loyalty, right? Is the brand is being loyal to me? If the brand is being loyal to me, I am likelier to be more loyal to the brand. Okay? And of course, ultimately it all boils down to data, right? The more data brands have about their you know, customers, the more is the personalization, the more are the offers, the better, is their overall communication, right? Which then takes us to uh, why is this important in the first place? Why all of this uh, brouhaha about personalization, right? I'm just gonna share some of the data points which is gonna reinforce this. It seems that a uh, you know, staggering 80% wants to return to a loyalty program if they are constantly being updated with content, with what they will earn, what they will get every month, every quarter, pretty much regularly. 
what this means is that if brands are able to communicate with their customers are able to offer their you know customers newer uh, promotions and rewards in other words if they can personalize all of this to these customers they are likelier to get better results and more footfall again an equally high number are more likely to make a purchase from a brand that offers them personalized experiences I guess no surprises there and finally when it comes to loyalty points in this day and age customers are likelier to use their points not towards the regular discounts and shipping vouchers etc but for other things you know a prize an experience uh, an experiential reward something that again right transcends transactions and creates a more emotional connection with the you know, customers right? so then how can a loyalty program help in all of this, right? I mean, as you all know, Zenrello essentially is a loyalty rewards platform, right? So yeah, personalization can be done by, by brands even without a loyalty program. So then what, what additional value are we bringing to the table? Well, loyalty-based campaigns, right? Uh, yes, a brand can always run regular promotions, you know, things like get a 10% voucher if you come and make a purchase from us. However, if you can cater to very specific customer segments and offer them points related promotions, that leads to better benefits because points, as we all know, is like their skin in the game, right? The more points they have, uh, the more are they going to come back and use those points in the future. So that's one area where loyalty programs can help. Rewards, well, we've talked about this already. Again, uh, just move on from the basic points to more bespoke perks. Uh, find out ways in which you can really engage with your customers, surprise them. Tears, right? I mean, we've all seen loyalty programs with uh, silver and gold and platinum and VIP and MVP and so on. Um, while it is, while tiers are nice in a way that they build engagement with a brand and they get more um, retention, they increase like you know like a stickiness with you know customers. Tiers are also a fantastic way to personalize and offer these very tier specific personalized benefits. Right, a particular company says all of the members in our highest vip platinum tier will get a chance to be featured on our website right everyone who is our gold standard member will get an exclusive handwritten note from the ceo they'll get a chance uh, to participate in uh, you know, sweepstakes and the winner gets an all expenses paid trip to disneyland right so um include a lot of tier based personalization and finally experiences right um what's really important here is to make these experiences contextual to a brand uh, we work with a very large kitchen appliances manufacturer right and these are pretty expensive kitchen appliances we are talking upwards of 40 50 000 us dollars what they're saying is that if a particular customer has spent more than $100,000 in the last one year, this company is going to send across a chef to their home and that chef is going to cook a five course meal. But that's an experience and that's also a brand contextual experience. Right? So different ways in which a loyalty program can really, really aid and abet your personalization efforts okay this brings us to uh, essentially who we are and what we do uh, zindrello is a SaaS based platform we help set up loyalty programs for companies across the world and 
We've been doing this for more than 14 years now. So a lot of uh, industry experience and expertise. The entire platform is built around what we call the different dimensions or aspects of loyalty. And as you can see here, as a platform, as a solution, we are focused on engaging and personalizing experiences, not only in the transactional sphere, but also in all of these other spheres as well. Okay, fantastic rankings, ratings, and reviews. Uh, please feel free to uh, check all of this out. A simple Google search should suffice. Okay. Now, yes, personalization is important. Uh, yes, a loyalty program has features and capabilities to uh, enable personalization, but I think we should take a step back and sort of delve a little deeper into how we go about it. Right? So essentially, there are three key ingredients that Zinrello deploys and that leads to the success of any loyalty program. These same three ingredients will also be extremely important while setting up personalization and associated strategies. Right? The first step is all about strategy, right? So it all starts with data, right? As you'd agree. So this step involves essentially defining the strategy based on analytics, right? Understanding the nuances of a particular brand, looking at current customer behaviors, desired customer behaviors, profiles, looking at the kind of metrics that we want to influence through the personalization efforts, and then using all of this information, all of this analytics to define the right structure, design, and strategy for all of the personalization efforts, okay? So if this piece is done, of course, then the tech platform becomes more effective. You get better ROI. And the tech itself is pretty comprehensive. All of the features, functionalities, etc., are built in out of the box. These can be deployed, these can be automated to not only set up world-class loyalty programs, but also build in personalization, customer segmentation, and so on. Okay? But that's not where it ends, right? It would have been so nice if brands could just set up a loyalty program and then you know things would happen magically from there. Um, some amount of work needs to be done at it, right? Some amount of uh, efforts are necessary to continuously uh, improve program performance and to get a program to do exactly what you want it to do. This, as you'd imagine, of course, includes a lot of program monitoring, right? Looking at those metrics, making sure that the metrics are what you want them to be. Uh, making sense of those metrics and those numbers and then if necessary a bit of optimization a bit of course correction maybe even um, and of course defining the right like, you know customer segments if necessary tweaking these these you know, customer segments from time to time and uh, as a platform as a company um, we are privy to a lot of industry best practices, right? Uh, we've seen what works, what does not work uh, across industries, across geographies. So that's also something that we bring to the table. And that's also something that we continuously share with our clients to make their programs very, very successful. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I've, I've been seeing a couple of questions. Please keep them coming. I will take all of these questions uh, towards the latter part of this presentation, okay? But please, please do keep them coming. All right, um, now let's delve a little deeper and uh, talk about the more granular details, right? I mean, what precisely can Zinvelo do in your personalization efforts? What are the different steps involved? The first and pretty much the, uh, you know, table stakes is having all of the loyalty features in place, right? And this really has to be a comprehensive set of features 
and that's what Zimbrello has. If the if the you know fundamentals of the points and the tiers and the attributes and the campaigns, if that is in place, then a brand is able to build on that and really sort of focus on their personalization efforts. So yes, core basic fundamental loyalty features has to be the the you know fundamental building block for all of the personalization efforts. Second is of course data, right? Can there ever be any personalization without data? Now, there are two aspects to this data component. The first aspect is Zinrello's ability to consume data from other sources. Right? So a lot of brands use uh, CRMs, CDPs, ERP systems, which have a lot of data about their you know, customers, uh, customer profiles, customer segments, uh, customer tags, etc. All of that data can be pushed into Zinrello automatically. Um, and similarly, data from Zinrello can also be pulled into other systems, right? All of this happens in real time and it happens automatically. So that was the first aspect of data. The second aspect is Zinrello's ability to generate additional data. So an, an example is um, what a lot of our clients do actually. So they offer loyalty points to the end users um, in exchange of them participating in a survey or a quiz, right? So essentially brands say, answer this quick three question survey and earn 500 points or um, share information about your profile, right? Your address and your demographics and your you know preferred product, preferred brand and so on to earn loyalty points. Participate in a quiz to earn points. And this can be pretty much whatever you want. So an apparel company says, share your favorite uh, um, you know, textile to earn points. And then they have these four options, right? Silk and denim and corduroy and so on. And auto parts company says, share the make and model of your vehicle with us to earn points, right? Um, so essentially all of this data then gets fed into Zimbrello through the surveys and the profile completion, et cetera. And then this data can be used to create all of the different customer segments, right? And that's what we mean by the zero party and the first party data. Um, for the uninitiated, zero party data is what your customers are directly sharing with you, like surveys, like profile. And first party data is what the loyalty program is deriving through customer actions like referrals, like their reviews, like what they've purchased, how often they have purchased and so on. Okay. So once we have the data, then is what we call our attributes framework. And this is where things get a tad interesting, right? So essentially these attributes, as we call it, are nothing but member fields. You can assign any number of different attributes to either a member or a transaction. For example, uh, you set up an attribute called, um, you know, textile preference, and then sort of values in that attribute could be silk, denim, corduroy, etc. Right. The auto parts company could, could have an attribute called vehicle information. And the sort of values in that attribute would be a 1985 Dodge, uh, 1979 Ford, and so on, right? So with these attributes, what you're essentially doing is you are creating a system to group these different customers into segments. Right? So now all customers who have a 1979 Ford becomes one you know, specific cohort. All customers who, whose clothing preference is silk becomes another cohort. And then you can combine attributes, right? All customers with a clothing preference of silk 
who have not made any purchase in the last 90 days. That could be one cohort. On the other example, all customers who, who own a 1979 Dodge, but have not serviced their vehicle for the last 180 days, right? So that's how you can create these very specific and very focused, you know, customer segments, okay? So these attributes are essentially what it helps us define all of these different customer segments. And the next step is now using all of this information, right? So we've got a, a ton of data. We've used that data to create attributes. We've combined different attributes. Now we need to figure out what our strategy should be, which of course has to be based on analytics. So we use all of this information, look at what the brand is trying to achieve, um, and then use this to define the right personalization strategies. For example, what an apparel company wants to do in the month of October and November is completely different from what the same company wants to do in um, February and March, right? October, November, the focus is on maximizing the holiday season, maximizing revenue, uh, customer acquisition, increasing ticket sizes, and so on. Whereas in February, March, the focus is all about customer retention, keeping all of the customers that they acquired during the previous holiday season, increase more brand like your stickiness, right? Similarly, what they want to do, okay, so what a particular okay, company wants to do in a more sort of, you know, like in, the, like in the traditional market, okay, they are in, let's say, the United States for many, many years, they have an established presence vis-a-vis -vis what they want to do in a market that they have newly entered, right? They might have recently launched in Canada, so their entire personalization strategy will be completely different, right? So that's what this, this particular step is all about. Then, of course, is our rules engine. What the rules essentially does is it now takes all of these attributes and then uses and sets up different rules for these individual like, you know, customer segments. Again, going back to our previous examples, if you have a Dodge 1979 and you've not serviced your vehicle for 180 days, you will earn 5,000 bonus points if you come and service your vehicle this month, right? From the apparel example, if your clothing preference is silk and you have made more than five purchases in the last two years, but have not made a purchase in the last 90 days, if you buy now, you would get a chance to be featured on our website or on our social media page, right? Again, setting up these rules to have those personalized campaigns in place, okay? Now the campaigns themselves could be static or dynamic, which essentially means these could be one-time campaigns, which are static, or you could set up dynamic campaigns that keep running within a specified time period. Members enter and exit these campaigns automatically based on the entry and exit criteria. Rewards, well, this is something we have discussed a lot of already, haven't we? Has to be a combination of monetary and non-monetary uh, promotions, perks, experiences, and so on. And these rewards have to be consistent with the overall brand, right? Uh, has to be contextual to the brand, has to be in line with the brand's larger marketing efforts, marketing calendar, has to be omni-channel so that irrespective of where 
I as an end customer am interacting with the brand, I can still see all of these offers, rewards and experiences, right? Social media, app, website, call center, customer service, in-store, it has to be consistent, right? So essentially, this is our uh, mantra uh, to really enable personalization and sort of get the most out of every single and every different customer segment, okay? Some of the benefits that different companies across the world have received uh, because of Zinrello, of course, there are a bunch of case studies as well, which is what we're going to go to next. This is a company called Jumbo. They sell uh, shoes, of course, online. They wanted to leverage the holiday season to improve customer retention. So they set up three different customer segments, right? One time purchasers, people pretty much who just buy once and then don't typically come back. Dormant users who sort of buy, but buy very infrequently and don't quite engage with the brand um, as much as they'd like. And the third segment were the top customers, right? Who've made more than three purchases in one year. So this was one, this was one. Further, for these guys, they offered 125 bonus points as a holiday bonus, right? What this means is that all of the dormant users were given these points to get them to come to the website and use those points on their next purchase, right? Whereas the super customers were given a double points campaign to really reinforce and make sure that their next purchase has to be from Jumbo, right? And that of course led to some pretty cool benefits and results, a 32% increase in customer retention. The next one is from a company called Cool Horse. Again, they wanted to target a very specific segment and that led to a 98% increase in their customer retention. The third one is uh, Yonka Paris, they sell cosmetics. So what they saw is there was a particular period in the year, which was really their sort of low season, typically February, March, and so on. So what they wanted to do was to essentially sort of bump up the sales in this, in this, in this low period or in the low season. And what they did for that was bonus points for all customers who make purchases just in that very specific time of the year. And that led to a 48% increase in revenue and, you know, double the sales, right? That's, that's a pretty, pretty impressive result. Uh, also, this is an example of how having the right customer communication leads to uh, better benefits. So one of the things that is very, very important for any personalization is effective communication to the customers, right? I mean, you can have the best offers and campaigns, but it, it'll amount to nothing, right? If your customers are not aware of it. So this is an example of uh, how by adding this information, they got six times higher clicks compared to the regular emails. Mm -hmm. Talking about um, some more case studies, this is of course Teleflora. And what you see here are three different campaigns that they ran for the three different times of the year. As you'd imagine, a um, flower company for them, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, these are very important uh, times of the day, of the year, sorry. So as you can see here, right? different kinds of campaigns for these different time periods. This was a $5 off to a specific group of customers. This was triple points, again, for a specific group of you know, customers. 
and this was a holiday season campaign. Again, just, just goes to show how a one size fits all kind of an approach will not work for these brands. Different campaigns, different types of personalization are important depending on uh, what a company is looking to achieve and depending on the different times of the year. Okay. All right, so that was pretty much it as far as uh, us talking about how to improve personalization and how to leverage loyalty program for personalization. We've had a lot of questions, so I'm just going to quickly start taking them one by one. So, um, Rola, I think, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name correctly has three questions okay we are going to quickly take one up one after the other uh, are there any limitations to the number of attributes you can assign to a member absolutely not because that would pretty much def uh, so defeat the purpose right unlimited number of attributes unlimited number of rules based on those attributes unlimited number of customer segments based on those attributes okay um an example of using data to assist in customization efforts. Uh, given a couple, um, I could give a third example as well. So the two examples that we gave that I shared was of an auto parts company, how they are using loyalty to sort of get to know the vehicle information of their you know, customers and then using that to create you know customer segments second one was how a loyalty program is uh, using uh, sorry is 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 using a surveys to figure out what the favored type of textile is and then using that to create customer segments a third type could be as simple as using surveys or using profile completion kind of activities in a loyalty program to find out what their favorite color is right what is their favorite time of the year is it fall is it spring and then using all of this to set up very very customized offers could be their birthdays right so a jewelry company use this loyalty program to know what the anniversary is and also to find out not only their anniversary but anniversary of their parents as well and then use that information to push through offers during the anniversary month because of course people tend to buy jewelry during their anniversaries right so that's an example of using data to assist in customization efforts the kind of metrics that we need to look at so the question here is what kind of metrics can be looked at and where do you obtain reliable members information well reliable members information is what is going to is i mean that's what zinrello will get for you right uh, because any zero party data and that's why we sort of stressed on zero party and first party data any zero party data is reliable because that's coming pretty much from the, the proverbial horse's mouth, right? And in terms of metrics, well, that really is a function of, of, uh, of the kind of campaign, right? A campaign that is being run during October, November for that kind of a campaign, metrics essentially are LTV, revenue repeat purchases and you know things along those lines but for a campaign during the slow time of the year for that kind of a campaign all of the metrics will focus more on retention right improving average order values decreasing the time between customer purchases and so on okay in the success stories that you shared, did the programs result in new customer acquisitions? Yes, it did. 
members who did not purchase or participate before absolutely yes that was one of the express objectives from one of the campaigns i think it was the jambu one where they really wanted to drive more purchases during the holiday season so yes it did lead to new customer acquisition but i go back to what i said earlier it really is a function of what a brand is looking to achieve from a particular campaign okay all right so um this is an interesting one uh, the name has not been shared but the question is can you provide more examples on how we can provide a VIP or premium experience for our users. We are struggling for ideas. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's difficult to give a blanket answer, honestly, because it is a function of your company. If you could maybe just add what your company does or what you guys sell, it would probably be easier because as I said, right, any premium example has to be contextual to a brand right uh, i can give one example so we work with a pretty large swiss watch company right so they sell these very expensive swiss watches what they're saying is as a vip experience or as a premium experience people can get a monogrammed watch box right so they are a pretty niche company right so they don't want to sort of dilute their brand by offering discounts so they're saying we will share a monogrammed watch box a coffee company as a vip experience is offering a latte art class so it's a virtual class where you can uh, sort of join remotely and they will teach you how to sort of have art on your coffee right that's 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 a pretty cool one I thought. Uh, another example is a company that sell uh, meat you know steaks online they're saying share a new recipe with us right, and if your recipe is good. We are going to showcase uh, you on our website. We are going to come over to your place. We are going to take a video of you cooking that particular recipe. So it really depends on the kind of brand, on, the, on what your brand is looking to achieve, and then sort of build from there. The other important consideration is what sort of customer behaviors do you desire? and then sort of go backwards from there to create uh, all of these different experiences okay uh, catherine has a question do you have any other premium user rewards experiences for vip customers the one you mentioned were great examples okay um okay so this was before i mentioned these last few examples uh, so I'm guessing these were some additional user rewards and experience related examples. Mm, happy to share some more offline as well. Um, yeah, I have one more. So we have this bank, this very large bank that we work with, right? Uh, and banks, as you're aware, typically uh, want to build a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, stickiness when they issue a you know, credit card or immediately after issuing a you know, credit card. So what this bank is saying is uh, if you spend more than $5,000 in the first three months of using the card, you are going to be entered into a sweepstakes for a trip to Las Vegas. That's pretty cool, I thought. Uh, we have another company that sells these uh, toys, you know, toys for kids. They're saying that some, you know, as a, as a VIP experience, the kid and the kid's photograph and a kid's video will be showcased on their website 
if and again uh, if the members upload that video in exchange of points so that's that's two things happening at once right whenever uh, a member is uploading you know taking that video and sharing that video with the brand that's instantly creating an emotional connection and more engagement with that particular customer right and because they are earning points they are likelier to use those points for their next purchases and if and when their kids are showcased on the website that's that's voila right that's a instant connection with that particular customer it also becomes a great testimonial for other customers to also share their kids videos right okay we have a ton of other questions as well uh well there's one more maybe yeah we could take another couple given the time what attributes do your clients use most frequently frequently to segment users um, the most common attributes are purchase related okay rfm recency frequency and monetary value of their customer purchases next lot is about their demographics right age gender overall profile where do they live uh, who all are there in their family and so on and the third is and the third sort of large you know high level type of attributes are the preference related attributes right what do they like uh, what sort of things do they have currently what do they want more of what feedback do they have about your brand about your business so largely these are the three sort of very very high level attributes that most of our clients use but again within these high levels there are further nuances right based on individual brands based on individual clients based on the kind of sort of campaigns that they want to run the time of the year and so on okay all right uh thank you thank you so much for all of these questions uh, very insightful questions and uh but there's one more okay maybe this can be the last one um what extent of automation do you have in these campaigns yeah that's a that's a good one the answer in very short is pretty much 100 percent in the sense that once you define and you set up these campaigns which has to be of course a one-time activity then these are self-running campaigns uh, where members will be enrolled into a particular campaign based on their attributes or based on the entry criteria and then members will also exit these campaigns again based on their attributes or their exit criteria within a particular campaign things like notifications emails nudges those go out automatically right those are completely white labeled configurable and once you set up a campaign at uh, pre-configured times those emails are going to go out automatically okay all right yeah thank you thank you so much for all of these questions uh, truly appreciate uh well some of these questions were actually quite interesting and insightful um there are a few more but we can take them offline uh our team will get back to you with those responses and uh at the end of this um webinar stuti will also share an email where you can send in any additional questions as well Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you had an insightful session. If you have any questions or inquiries later, please feel free to reach out at info at the rate zindrello.com. I have also put the ID in the chat bar. So please do save it. Thank you and have a great day today.